everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hypomagnesiemia. In my previous video I covered hypermagnesiemia. So in this video we're going to go over hypo and I'm going to cover the causes, the signs and symptoms, and the nursing interventions and give you some clever mnemonics on how to remember that material. Also I'm going to hit the key concepts of things that are hit on on the NCLEX exam and on your nursing lecture exams. Now after this video, be sure to go to my website, registerednursern.com, and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on the difference between hyper and hypomagnesiemia. A card should be popping up or a link should be in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, as always, I like to break these words down and determine what electrolyte we are dealing with and is it high or low. Okay, first part of this word is hypo. Hypo means under. Magnese is the prefix for magnesium. So we already know we are dealing with the electrolyte magnesium. And emia, the other part of the word, means blood. So you put all that together and what do you get? You get low magnesium in the blood. Now what is a normal magnesium level? A normal mag level is 1.6 to 2.6 milligrams per deciliter. And anything less than 1.6 is considered hypomagnesiemia. Now, let's go over the role of mag in the body. Whenever you understand how the function of mag works in your body, you will understand why things cause low magnesium and the signs and symptoms of what you're seeing. They all go hand in hand, so I really wanted to include this. Okay, magnesium plays a huge function in your cells. It helps transfer energy and store energy. It regulates the parathyroid hormone, which plays a very important role in calcium levels. And we talked about this back in the calcium electrolyte videos, hypocalcemia and hypocalcemia. And we talked about the parathyroid. Now, a lot of times whenever you have low mag levels, you're gonna have low calcium levels as well. And this is because um, the parathyroid is affected by magnesium and it releases, the release of mag is inhibited whenever you start getting parathyroid issues and that's why you're going to see the low calcium levels. Next, um, mag uh, helps in metabolizing your carbs, your lipids, and your proteins and it regulates blood pressure. So that's another thing whenever you start seeing hypertension and hypomagnesiemia or hypotension and hypermagnesiemia is because magnesium plays a huge role on your blood pressure regulation. Also, another important thing is where magnesium is absorbed. It is absorbed in the small intestine. So anything that's wrong with your GI system that's affecting absorption is going to affect how much magnesium you take into your body, which can limit your magnesium levels, which causes hypomagnesemia. And it's excreted by your kidneys. So if your kidneys are messed up or if they're wasting too much magnesium or keeping too much magnesium, that can throw those mag levels off. Okay, so let's look at the causes of hypomagnesiemia. Now to help you remember this, I have tried to break it down and created this mnemonic. So remember the phrase low mag. We're already dealing with low mag, so this will help you remember. And each letter will correlate with the cause. Okay, so first let's start with L. L stands for limited intake of magnesium. You see this in starvation. People who aren't being able to eat, they have really low mag levels because foods are rich in mag and you don't get it, you have low mag levels. Oh, other electrolyte issues cause low mag. And remember this, hypocalcemia causes it and hypokalemia causes it. And remember the O and the hypo, because whenever you have low mag levels, you will also have those low levels. Next, W, wasting mag in the kidneys. Remember, kidneys are huge for getting rid of our mag levels. So if that patient, remember this for a test, a lot of tests like to throw out these drugs. If a patient is on any type of loop or thi thiazide diuretics, they are at risk for low mag levels or cyclosporins because this stimulates the kidneys to waste mag. Next, M for malabsorption issues. This gets back to magnesium's role in absorption in the small intestine. So if a patient has a history of Crohn's, celiacs, they've been vomiting, 
that can throw off your mag levels they won't take that and absorb it in their stomach also drugs like proton pump inhibitors like protonics give a lot of that in the hospital prolisec nexium as well any of those gi drugs that end in uh, p-r-a-z-o-l-e watch out for those because those affect the way that the body is absorbing um, magnesium a this is another huge one that's why i have an asterisk by it alcohol um, alcohol patients who have a history of alcoholism actively use a lot of alcohol they um, are at risk because they have usually poor dietary habits and alcohol actually stimulates the kidneys to waste magnesium and a lot of times alcoholics they have acute pancreatitis which affects your mag levels and this right here um, i remember test questions from nursing school on this they'll give you a scenario about a patient um, talks about their alcohol consumption and they'll say which electrolyte do you expect to be affected by this or something like that so just remember that magnesium and people who use alcohol or who are alcoholics they have issues with magnesium levels and we'll get into that here in a second um, a little bit more of a test question that they'll ask you in the signs and symptoms okay and then lastly g glycemic issues patients who are going and diabetic ketoacidosis dka or insulin administration this can also throw off your mag levels as well okay so let's look at the signs and symptoms of hypomagnesemia how do these patients look and present remember the phrase twitching with low mag levels you have neuromuscular excitability everything is twitching and it's really excited your reflex reflexes are very hyper reflexive but it, it's the opposite in high magnesium everything is lethargic and weak you don't even have deep tendon reflexes they'll be extremely diminished or completely absent so remember that it's the complete opposite of hyper okay t for the first part of twitching positive trousseau sign remember in the calcium videos i discussed this in depth um, with the hypomagnesemia you will have that and that's due because the patient has low calcium levels w for weak wet respirations i for irritable they'll be irritable they won't be happy at all t for torsades de pointes this is very important i put a asterisk by this this goes along with the alcoholism which i'll get into here in a second this right here is an abnormal heart rhythm and it's lethal a patient goes into it they're going to go into cardiac arrest and you start cpr everything and this is seen in patients who have alcohol abuse and this is a classic scenario it'll say a patient comes in their alcohol levels this all of a sudden they go into our sods what will you check as a nurse and you will check a magnesium level anytime these patients are going in to this rhythm you want to look at mag level because this is normally what is causing that and tetany this is the abnormal twitching okay c for cardiac changes another thing you need to remember exams love to hit on this um, whenever you have low mag levels if it's moderately low you will see tall t waves and depressed st segments remember that very important and if it's severe you can have prolonged pr and qt intervals with wide qrs complexes and whenever you start seeing those qt intervals that are widened this is putting the patient majorly at risk back to torsade so you definitely need to watch out for that and you can also the instead of the t waves being tall they'll go to flat okay and then the other c part of that um they'll have a positive uh, chavotsky sign which goes back again to the hypocalcemia okay h for hypertension and hyperreflexia this again remember mag regulates your blood pressure so the patient's going to have high blood pressure i for involuntary movements n for nausea and g for gi issues they'll have decreased bowel sounds and mo mobility of the bowels okay to nursing interventions this is a big section that tests love to ask you what are you going to do as a nurse for this patient with a low mag level okay first thing you want to monitor their cardiac their gi respiratory neuro status very important and put them on a cardiac monitor and monitor for any ekg changes that we talked about earlier next the doctor may order some potassium oral supplements and again this is due to the low 
um, potassium levels and it's hard to actually get magnesium levels up if the calcium levels are low so you want to do a balancing act and get them both up together next the doctor may order some calcium supplements with vitamin D or 10% calcium gluconate if the calcium levels are low to help with that. And this one is a big one for sure. Uh, if the levels are really low, the doctor will order magnesium sulfate IV infusion. And with this, you have to monitor the magnesium levels very closely because you can send them into hypermagnesiemia. And as the nurse, what you need to be doing while you're giving this infusion is checking deep tendon reflexes. Because remember, in hypomagnesiemia, the reflexes are super active. But in hypermagnesiemia, you will have diminished or absent deep tendon reflexes. So if the patient starts having that, you've probably increase their magnesium level way too much. Um, place and seizure precautions because they're at risk for this. And if the doctor does order oral magnesium, watch because this can give the patient diarrhea and diarrhea will waste magnesium and you, you could even drop their levels even more. So watch for that. And another thing, of course, exams love to ask, what foods are you gonna feed the patient with this type of magnesium level? So make sure you know foods that are rich in mag. And I thought of this little phrase to help you remember each letter correlates with the food. Uh, remember the phrase, always get plenty of foods containing large numbers of magnesium. So A for avocado, G for green leafy vegetables. This can be spinach, kale, anything like that. P for peanut butter and pork. O for oatmeal, fish, uh, specifically like canned tuna, mackerel. Uh, C for cauliflower and chocolate, specifically dark chocolate. L for legumes, uh, N for nuts, O for oranges, and M for milk. And those are our foods that you want to encourage these people who have low mag levels to consume. Okay, so that is a little bit about hypomagnesiemia. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to take the free quiz. I will test your knowledge on the difference between hyper and hypomagnesiemia. And thank you so much for watching, and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.